Okay, y'all, so for pace training, um, that's the most common. You're just going, um, basically from when you start your training, you're gonna look at your, um, your fitness level, and then you're gonna look at your goal pace. And so you're gonna slowly move from your current pace to your goal race pace. And so you're gonna use that to measure um, those paces you're gonna use to put into your workouts, to your long runs. And you can basically just do a two mile time trial um, get a gauge of where you're at and put those numbers into like the Macmillan calculator or any kind of race predictor um, website. And then that will help you determine your, your workout paces, your long runs and your easy runs. Um, there's some pros and cons with each method and with the pace method, I find um, it's the most common and it's probably the most sexy. So uh, when I say that, I just mean people are talking about their paces when they're running. They're not talking about heart rate. They're not talking about their rate of perceived effort or this other zone. They're talking about, hey, I ran 10 miles today at seven minute pace and I, you know, it was my fastest pace I've ever run. Um, so they're not necessarily going like, I ran at 150 beats per minute. Um, so so I think that's, um, that's one of the good things. I think it's easy to see progress that way. Um, you're, you're always going to be able to look down and, and see your pace and it's, you know, right on your, your wrist. So some of the challenges I find are that, um, it can be hard to adjust when you're, you know, when the temperature is changing during the summer, during the spring and the fall, basically the four seasons, temperature is changing. And so, um, here in Austin, I think we only have two seasons, but, um, when you're going through those transition phases, it's going to be harder to dial in the right pace for you because that's going to change as your body's adapting um, to the humidity, to the heat, and also to like the terrain. And so um, I also find that you can overtrain easily with the pace method because you're comparing, you know, especially for people that have been training for a long time. Um, you, I find like from the people I've been working with and coaching over the you know last 10, 15 years, um, you tend to, and even with myself, I'm gonna compare it to what I used to be doing. And so, you know, when I'm doing my marathon training, I'm thinking, oh man, when I was in college, I was running, you know, 20 seconds faster a mile. And instead of being pissed off and kicking myself, you know, um, I tend to go to some of the other methods because the pace method, I'm getting frustrated. Um, it kind of pulls me out of the moment of the workout and makes me, you know, just get a little bit too focused in on the target instead of the feeling throughout the workout. And so, um so that's kind of the pace method um training and we use it a lot and instead of one thing we're doing now and that i'm doing is i just give a pace range um instead of an exact pace for a workout and so that gives a little more flexibility for temperature for terrain and stuff like that so um keep that in mind for your upcoming training and um let us know how it goes